view on the relationship between, between the democratization of Eurozone and uh, a global democratization, as you were saying yesterday in your talk. And secondly, I'd like to ask you if you think yourself, after this experience in, in the Greek government, as an heretic optimist. You're quite right. I'm, I am a heretic. One has to be a heretic to have new ideas. Uh, heresy is just a charged, a religiously charged word for critical thinking. And we at universities, as citizens, we should be heretics. We should be thinking new thoughts. And let's not forget that uh, once upon a time, the, um, the heresies of those uh, periods uh, became the orthodoxy of today. On the broader question about the Global South, about colonialism, it is essential to remember that uh, ever since uh, we moved from the older version of colonialism to what we now know as financialization, not globalization, humanity has been globalizing from the beginning. What has changed since the 1970s is financialization, is that parts of, significant parts of the South, south have moved to the north, and parts of the north have moved to the south. So in South Korea, Samsung um, is uh, the part of the north that is transferred to the south. The vast regions of unemployment, of uh, dispossession, and uh, just uh, apoplexy in Britain, in Germany, in around Paris, uh, those areas that, of, that are devastated socioeconomically are part of the South that have uh, moved to the North. So, it is, it, it, interestingly, I, I remember Tony Benn once said that um, after Britain lost its colonies, Whitehall, which is where the bureaucrats uh, work and uh, conduct their affairs around the country, are treating um, the rest of Britain, the British people, as their last colony. So, in the era of post-colonialism, uh, we have this blending of uh, development and the spreading of uh, attitude of colonization everywhere, including in the North. At the end of the Second World War, there was this opportunity to create a planetary global system of governance. Uh, to some extent, the first 20 years after the Second World War, did have this feature, the Bread and Wood system, at least for the West, was a system that created stability and growth. Of course, it was at a time when the colonial wars were raging, decolonization had uh, terrible repercussions, uh, not because it was wrong to decolonize, but because the process was not smooth, it, was, uh, it created local elites, and so on and so forth. But at least there was a semblance of a global plan which could be democratized. Now we don't have it. So we have to start from scratch, I'm afraid.